So in this short series, we're gonna learn how to create some apps for Ethereum. So in case you don't know what Ethereum is, Ethereum is like a big massive distributed computer. And to run your program on Ethereum, you have to spend some money because it's running on somebody else's computer, so they have to be paid for that. And to do that, Ethereum has its own currency called Ether. Just like Bitcoin has Bitcoins, and Litecoin has Litecoins, Ethereum has Ether. So apps on Ethereum are called smart contracts. And we're gonna learn how to create two smart contracts in this series. We're gonna learn how to create our own currency, and we're gonna learn how to create our own lottery. So the way the currency works is you send some ether to our smart contract and it sends you back some coins from our currency. And you can send our coins to other people and you can receive them so it works just like a currency. To make our coins worth something, you can withdraw them to get your ether back. So our coins are backed by ether so that gives them value. So we're gonna be able to generate coins the way lots of cryptocurrencies generate coins is by mining, but what we're going to do is we're just going to allow you to buy coins. But one of the things that mining does is it limits the supply and the supply grows over time. So we're still going to have that. Our contract is only going to let a certain amount of coins be bought up at any particular time. So there's multiple ways to develop for Ethereum. You can scroll down on the Ethereum website and you can download the Ethereum wallet. That takes a long time and takes a lot of hard drive space. So instead what you can do is you can go to Ethereum's IDE, which is called Remix. So just go to remix.ethereum.org. So using this IDE, you can run your code and you can actually send it straight to the Ethereum network. But Ethereum has a couple of test networks that allow you to get Ether for free and to test out your contract before you send it onto the real Ethereum network. And that's what we're gonna be using. So in order for this to work, you have to download a Chrome plugin called MetaMask. So just download the plugin and add it to Google Chrome and you'll have this icon in the corner here. You can see here is my account and if I click on this you can see there's the main Ethereum network and there's this test network. There's a couple of test networks but we're going to use this first one which is called Robston and to start with you're going to have zero Ether. So because this is on the test network we can get some Ether for free. So if you go to this website here it's called a faucet. If we type in our Ethereum address we can send ourselves some Ether and that will let us test out our contract. So now if I click on MetaMask, you can see the amount of Ether I have has increased by three because the faucet sent me some Ether. So now we're gonna create our contract. So Ethereum contracts or programs are written in a language called Solidity. And this is the first line of every Solidity program. It tells Ethereum what version of Solidity we're gonna use. Then we have something called a contract and we call our contract whatever we want. I'm gonna call it Howcoin. So this is sort of like a class in another language. Uh, but within the contract, we then have kind of a constructor for the contract. So we create a function with the same name as our contract, and we're gonna say it's public. And this function's gonna run when the contract's deployed. So the first time it's ever sent to the Ethereum network, this is gonna run. But rather than type the whole contract out, I'm gonna paste in one that I created earlier, and we're gonna explain that because it'll make it easier to understand. And we're also gonna have the source code on GitHub so you can follow along in your own time. So I've pasted my contract in here, and if I scroll down, you can see it's about 100 lines long. So here we created our contract. I've called it Howcoin. That's what we're gonna call our cryptocurrency. Then we have this mapping at the beginning. This is like an associative array in a normal programming language. It maps a user's address to their balance. So in Bitcoin, you have a Bitcoin address. In Ethereum, you have an Ethereum address. And in Howcoin, which is powered by Ethereum, we use Ethereum addresses to track balances. So then I have the name of the coin, which I'm gonna call Howcoin, the symbol of a currency, which is just HOW, and the maximum supply. So this looks like a massive number. So here we have 42 million. That's the maximum supply. That's the maximum number of high coins that we can create. But we also have these six zeros after that. And that's because we've said down here that the number of decimals our coin can be broken up into is six. So our coin can have six digits after the decimal point. And in an Ethereum contract, you are dealing in the smallest denomination of your coin. So I said at the start of the video that we're not gonna allow every coin to be bought at the beginning. And the way we're gonna do that is we're only gonna release a certain amount of coins every certain amount of time. And the reward is gonna be 50 high coins. So it's 50 with six zeros at the end of it because we're dealing in the smallest denomination again. Just like Bitcoin and Litecoin, we're gonna cut the reward in half every so often, just to make sure that our coins don't go above the 42 million mark. Then we have these events. Events are just things in Ethereum that people can listen to and then react to. So if, if somebody transfers coins in your currency, people can listen to that. So it's not that important. We could easily take these out and our coin would still work, but they're just in just to give our coin a bit more completeness. So what we do is we have a function called update supply. So what it basically says is if the time since 
the reward last cut in two is greater than or equal to 2,100,000 minutes. And I just picked that number because it's four years. It's the same as Bitcoin and Litecoin. Then we just cut the reward in two and we update the time of last halving so that we can start tracking the next time that we're going to cut it in two. The next thing we're going to do when we update the supply is we're going to find out the last time that it increased. And initially I've set it to increase every one second. That's why I have one second here. It makes development easier. But if you want to copy Litecoin, you would do 150 seconds. That's two and a half minutes. So every two and a half minutes, the total supply increases by 50. And the circulating supply is the actual amount of coins held in people's accounts. So down here is where we transfer our coins. So what this require function does is it just checks if the person's balance is greater than or equal to the amount they want to sell. As you can see here, it checks that they have enough. Then we check if the receiver's balance is greater than or equal to their current balance. Because in Solidity, if I try to send a lot of coins and it hit the maximum possible number in, a, in an unsigned int, it will overflow, it'll go back to the beginning again, so we have to prevent against that. Then finally, if those two checks work, what we do is we subtract the balance from the sender and we add it to the receiver, and then we update our supply again. We update the supply because in Ethereum, our contract is only executed when somebody either sends coins, buys coins, something like that. So even though our supply increases every 150 seconds, it won't actually increase until the contract is executed and it'll only execute whenever somebody, for example, transfers a coin. So to increase the supply, we have to run it every time somebody transfers the coin. So here we have a function called mint and that function is what we use to buy coins. So what we do is we just check for overflow again. And what message.value is, is it's the amount of ether someone sent to our contract. So we take the amount of ether and we divide it by this number because one high coin is going to be worth a lot less than one ether. So to get the number of high coins from the number of ether, we just divide it by this massive number here. That's kind of like our exchange rate. And then we give the user the coins. Then to withdraw money, we check if the person trying to withdraw money actually has enough to withdraw. And then what we do is we subtract their coins from their account. We add it back into the unspent supply because those coins have already been created, but they're no longer in somebody's account. So they're not circulating. So they're back into the unspent pile of coins and then what we do is we convert it back into ether so we take the amount of coins we multiply it by the same number that we divided it by up here to convert it back into ether and we use this function here to send the ether back to the user and then finally we update the supply again and that's our entire contract so to create our coin all we have to do is click create and that will create it on the test network we just click submit and what we can do, we can copy this. And if we want to run it on our own computer, we can go into the Ethereum wallet and we can go to network and we can click on solo network and that will let us run our own sort of private Ethereum network. So to create our contract on our solo network, we just click on contracts. We just paste it in here. We click on our contract called Highcoin and we click deploy. So we just put in our password for our Ethereum account. And to create an account, you just click on add account and it'll ask you for a password and then you can create it. But you can see we're on a private Ethereum network, so it's not actually mining anything. So to mine things, we have to mine them ourselves. We just click start mining. You can see now it's started to mine. Here's high coin. You can see the reward is currently 50 coins. The unspent supply is zero. The maximum supply is 42 million. And the symbol is there, the time of last halving. Everything is here. And just to make things a bit easier because we're only developing our coin, I'm gonna decrease the amount of time it takes to increase the supply from 150 seconds to one second. And I'm gonna deploy that. So our contract's been created, here it is here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mint some coins and I'm not gonna put in any ether because I just wanna see the supply increase. So we're gonna see the unspent supply increase. There we go. And you can see there's 2,550 high coins. Everything is displayed in the lowest denomination. That's why it looks so big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send 0.1 ether and I'm gonna send that. And when I mint these coins, it's going to let me buy them. So you can see now the contract has a balance of 0.1 ether. And if I go to my wallets and I go to my account, you can see for high coin, I have 1000 high coins. So if I wanna send some coins to somebody, I can go to transfer and say I wanna send it to this address here. This is a zero address. This is sort of just a way to burn coins in a lot of cryptocurrencies. So if I send them there and I'm gonna send, say, if my balance is here, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to send half to this address. There we go. So now you can see my balance decreased by half. The unspent supply increased because it updated the supply, but the circulating supply didn't increase. Finally, if I want to withdraw my coins, I can go to withdraw. And because I sent half of them, I can only withdraw half. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in here. And if I click execute, it's gonna let me withdraw them. 
But if I want to withdraw even a single extra part of a coin and click execute, you can see it failed because my balance wasn't big enough. So if I just execute this now, I get my ether back. The amount of ether in the contract decreased by half and I got my ether back. So that's how to make a really simple cryptocurrency using Ethereum. The source code for all this is going to be on the HowCode GitHub page. And if you have any questions, don't forget to email me or comment or tweet or message me on Facebook. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.